Hey, what's up, folks? Michael here with Primal Edge, and I got something uh, kind of fun for you. Yeah, we're doing a dog treat camp lantern. This is something I saw on the internet. This is not my idea, and I thought it was really cool. I'm going to put a link to the a video that I saw it in if I can find the thing again. I'll put it down in the pinned comment down below. Um, yeah, so basically I ran across a video where an individual took a dog treat, one of those little rawhide bones that you give your dog, and he turned it into a lamp. So I'm like, hey, that's a pretty cool idea. An old, you know, rustic style, uh, I think he called it a Viking style camp lantern, which is pretty cool. I'm okay with that. I'll, I'll, I'll call it that too. So what I did was I went to the yard, got some sticks off of a bush, and cut them down to the same length. Um, I then went through and got some old project boards that I had and cut a couple of squares out, whittled the tips off of the wood so that the glue would have something to stick to better than the thin bark that's eventually going to dry up and fall off. And folks, while I'm thinking about it, if you like this video or you enjoyed it at all, at the end, give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And if you're into maker style videos like this, I, I don't I don't always do these types of projects. I'm usually working in leather or steel or wood or something like that. But if you like maker style content, consider subscribing. I'd really like to have you as part of the community. And hit that bell for notifications as well. Um... So I've drilled the holes in the base and I'm going to go ahead and put the wood in right here. You see me doing that. Now the original intent was to have a top and a bottom. That little square piece of wood was going to be on top as well. But I couldn't get it to work just right so I kind of had to pivot a little bit here. And you see me taking a small piece of that raw hide and I soaked it in the water overnight and came up pretty supple. Now this stuff is really slick. I had to staple it down to that board just so it wouldn't slide around and I could cut a strip out like this. And basically what I'm doing is tying it around there. I'm not really worried about tying it into a knot. And in fact, I couldn't get into a knot. What I did was, you see me taking it apart here. I took and tied a knot on one end and then put a slit on the other. Wrapped it around and then put the knot through the slit. Uh, you'll see me cut the slit here in a second. Yeah. Yeah, and then I wrapped it around a few times, put the knot through the slit, and then let it dry. And I'm telling you, that thing shrunk, and it dried. It's not coming apart. I, I mean, honestly, I don't think I needed the glue there. If I could just held the thing together with the clamps and let the rawhide dry, now nah, that it stuck to it, it's not going anywhere, it's not falling off. Pretty impressive. There go my dogs. So I did the same to the other side. Not going to bore you through the process. Now, I didn't really need to do templates here, but I went ahead and did templates anyway. So i gone ahead and just grabbed a piece of chipboard, measured the stuff out, and just cut it to kind of see what it was going to look like. Now, I understand that this is not a very practical idea, but it is what it is. And I, you know, I just wanted to do it because I thought it would be something fun. You guys know I like to go outdoors and I have fun out there. I love to make my own kit and gear. I'm not one of those ultra lightweight guys. I like to carry heavy stuff, you know, axes. I make everything out of leather and canvas and all that type of stuff. So this is something fun that I probably bring with me, especially on an overnighter. Hey, puppy dog. So, yeah, I kind of figured this was going to be adequate size. I needed the opening at the top, and I thought this would work just fine. So I grabbed one of the big dog trees, you know, the big bones that you give them. Well, I guess it's not really a bone. It's raw head. Soaked it overnight. And a little advice, if you try this on your own, definitely use a paper towel. Be sure your razor blade is extra sharp and don't expect to go through it in one shot. This stuff is slippery, almost like jellyfish kind of slippery when it gets pliable like this. So you want to move slow, move deliberately, and be sure you have a really sharp razor knife or exacto or whatever it is you whatever it is you're using. Move slow, move deliberately, and your cuts will come out fine. So once everything was cut out, it was really just a simple matter of punching the holes. And you don't really have to punch the holes. I just wanted to. I thought it would look good and, you know, make it easier for stitching. I didn't even have to use a needle when I punched these holes. I mean, these things were tiny, tiny holes. It's the smallest punch I had. 
But doing it this way, I was able to thread the, the, I was able to stitch these things together without even having to use a needle. And there's a million ways you can do it. You can, I did an X pattern, you can do crisscross, you can just do individual ones and just tie them off and cut them off one at a time. Dealer's choice here. You sew it up however you want to do it. And I got to tell you, when these things dried out and it's all said and done, I mean, you know, yeah, it's a novelty, but it's kind of cool. It's my style. I like it. I mean, I would definitely bring this on a camping trip with me, if for nothing else than, than the uh, talking factor. All right, folks. Well, that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a bit of a quirky build, uh, but I thought it was pretty cool, and I thought I'd share it with you. Thanks again for sticking around with me today. You all have a great day, and I'll see you soon.